welcome to another episode of PSLE Science Made Simple. I'm Noel and I'm a PSLE Science Specialist here at the Peak Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a past year examination question on the topic of reproduction. I've also prepared this question for you to download for free by clicking a link in the description box below. So let's get started. Question 3. Study the diagram of a fruit shown below. Which of the following statements are most likely true about the flower which this fruit has developed from? Since the diagram has already drawn the fruit for you, let us draw the flower the fruit has developed from on the left-hand side. Now that we are done drawing the flower, let us label the different parts of the flower. Starting with this part here on the top. What is the name of this part? This part is known as the stigma. And what is the name of this part that is holding the stigma up? This part is known as the style. And the style connects the stigma to which part of the flower? The style connects the stigma to the ovary. And what can be found inside the ovary? The ovule. The stigma, style, ovary and ovule, do they belong to the female or male reproductive parts of the flower? They belong to the female reproductive parts. Okay, so we will just label female on the top. Next, what is the name of this part of the flower? This part is known as the anther. And what is the name of the part that is holding the anther up, which is highlighted in purple? This is also known as the filament. The anther and the filament, do they belong to the male or female reproductive parts of the flower? They belong to the male reproductive parts. Now that we are done labeling the different parts of the flower, let us match the part of the flower the fruit has developed from. So the fruit developed from which part of the flower? The fruit developed from the ovary. And what can we find inside the fruit? We can find seeds. And seeds developed from which part of the flower? Seeds developed from the ovule. And through this exercise, there is something I'll need you to know. is that one fruit will have developed from only one ovary. What if there are many fruits, like your grapes? Many fruits will have developed from many ovaries. Okay, the same theory applies for your seeds. If there is only one seed, one seed will have developed from only one ovule. And if there are many seeds, many seeds will have developed from many ovules. In this diagram, how many fruits do we have? We only have one fruit. Therefore, one fruit will have developed from how many ovaries? Only one ovary. And how many seeds does this fruit have? One or many? The fruit has many seeds. Therefore, many seeds must have developed from one or many ovules? Many ovules. Now that we are done analyzing the flower and the fruit, let us take a look at the statements below. Statement A. The flower has many ovaries. Let us focus on the fruit that is drawn in this diagram. How many fruits are there? There is only one fruit. And as mentioned just now, one fruit will have developed from how many ovaries? Only one ovary. Does this match what statement A say? It does not match, right? Because instead of many ovaries, there should only be one ovary. Therefore, statement A is wrong. Next, let's take a look at statement B. The ovary of the flower contains many ovules. How many seeds does this fruit have? This fruit has many seeds. And many seeds must have developed from one or many ovules? Many ovules. Does this match what statement B say? It does, right? Because statement B says that there are many ovules. Therefore, statement B is correct or wrong? Statement B is correct. Moving on to statement C. The fruit was developed from a plant with many male parts. Do you guys still remember what are the names of the male parts of the flower? It is the anther and the filament. And the fruit developed from which part of the flower? The fruit developed from the ovary. And inside the fruit, we have the seeds. The seeds developed from which part of the flower? From the ovules. And do you remember what happens to the other reproductive parts of the flower once the fruit starts developing? They actually wither and drop off. So what do you think is going to happen to the anther and the filament? They are going to wither and drop off as well. So when we are taking a look at the fruit, are we able to see and count how many anthers and filaments there were? You won't be able to tell because they have already weathered and dropped off. Okay, so over here, I will write down, cannot tell. So can we give statement C a tick? We cannot, okay, because we cannot tell. Let's move on to the last statement, statement D. The flower was pollinated before the fruit developed. 
Do you still remember what are the two important processes the flower has to undergo before it can develop into a fruit? It must undergo pollination. And after pollination, fertilization. So is it true that the flower was pollinated before the fruit developed? It is true. Okay, therefore we give statement D a tick. Which of the following statements are most likely true? Do we look for the ticks or crosses? We look for the ticks. And which statements have we ticked? B and D. Therefore, answer is option 4. Thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to check out more videos by us, do click on the link on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye!